There's so much good stuff going on with these boards today, it's honestly kind of tough to know where to begin. Now to frame this up a little bit, I did just finish my very first custom build. Nothing crazy, KBD 75 V2, so the majority of my keyboard background comes from either production or pre-built boards, and I have traditionally been a pretty strong proponent of Drops keyboard offerings in the past. From that perspective, these versions of the NK65 get a lot right. We're talking 65% layout, bare bones, hot swap, south facing switches, per key RGB, USB-C, included coiled cable, included carrying case, and internal noise dampening. And one of these models comes in at a price that has the potential to be a major game changer. We're gonna talk about why. You ready? Let's go. Yo, I'm Brian P, you're watching Bad Z Tech, and today we're checking out the NK65 entry and aluminum versions from Novel Keys. So we've got the NK65 entry and the NK65 aluminum priced at 95 and 180 US respectively. The only difference between these two is that the entry is polycarbonate and it's in a translucent purple they call N65 purple, where the aluminum version is, well, it's aluminum and it comes in the original black and this new silver. First and foremost, you get a carrying case included, really decent logoed hard shell zippered case, a mesh pocket in the roof and a little cutout in the bottom with Velcro straps to keep everything secure. It's not quite the level of the TX carrying case, but I've yet to have any keyboard show up here with a decent carrying case of any type, except maybe this GX68 that just turned up, and it's not even close to the same level. Inside you'll find a coiled cable, USB-C, this isn't really what you think of when you think of a coiled cable, this is really thin, plastic coated, like sticky isn't the right word, but it's definitely like a hard, glossy plastic, really tight, small diameter coil, and it is pretty short overall. You also get a little warning card inside that tells you to make sure your switch legs are straight before you try to plug them in, as well as where to go to get started on firmware for the board. This is VIA and QMK compatible. VIA is where it's at though. Thanks to everyone who recommended that I go that way over QMK configurator for my custom. The key tester alone is mint. As for the cases themselves, they have very simple geometry. I think it's like eight degrees, no height adjust, just these long silicone strips on the bottom. This thing does not slide around. There's no light strip, there's no underglow. It's clean and simple. The plate is aluminum in both cases. Now the entry level weighs just a hair under 650 grams and the aluminum comes in at about 1.2 kilos or two pounds, 11 ounces. I should point out that the see-through nature of the polycarbonate case is going to show LEDs through the case, which you may view as a pro or a con. Both boards are designed to pretty much have zero switch visibility from any angle, though again, if your switches have clear tops, you'll see that as well on the entry-level board. The USB-C connection is slightly recessed. It's on the right-hand side, which personally drives me nuts, but that's just me. Despite these coming completely pre-assembled, you can get into them if you need to for any reason with relative ease. The entry uses small Phillips screws, Torx on the aluminum. You'll find the PCB fastened to the plate and the plate attached to the lower part of the case. Inside is the new V2 PCB in black. It's still compatible with the V1, by the way, just minor revisions. It's a really nice looking PCB as well. Kale hot swap sockets and per key RGB, and it supports stabilizer pins on your switches, so no need to permanently mod anything to take advantage of the hot swap like in the alt and it has south facing switches in case you're not in the know some combinations of switches and gmk or cherry profile keycaps have what's called interference where the keycap will make contact with the switch top i'm going to put a link down in the description to a video from a youtuber named wildcat that does a really good job of explaining this if you want to learn more now if having backlit keycaps is important to you then south facing is not a great choice because the led shines through the lower portion of the switch which means the character will get virtually no light because legends aren't normally printed on the lower half of of keycaps. So about the only downside to this PCB at all that I can figure is that like the vast majority of hot swap PCBs, it does lock you into this physical layout, which in this case means three single unit keys between your space bar and your arrows and not two 1.25 unit keys with a spacer like on the alt. Other stuff like no support for split space bar, no step caps lock, stuff like that. But really versus any other pre-built, there's a strong argument that this is the best hot swap PCB out there. The other thing you'll find inside this case is a thick wedge-shaped noise 
noise dampening insert made of silicone. This is one of the few complaints early adopters had of the original round of NK65 boards, so it's really nice to see this included. Stabilizers here are cherry and they're already flat on the bottom. These are plate mount and the PCB is not set up to handle PCB mount either, so you get what you get. These are lubed from the factory, not over lubed like I like to do, but adequately lubed. So for the entry version, I've gone with these new Kale Silent Linears and my JTK Hyperfuse set. And for the aluminum version, we're gonna go with some NK Blueberries and GMK 8008 from Dixie Mech. Okay, so naturally being a fan of silent switches, I prefer the sound of the polycarbonate board more, but that's not the only reason. The polycarbonate board, obviously due to its material, has no ping at all. The aluminum, even with that big silicone dampener inside, still exhibits some audible ping. Now it's less obvious at ear height, like you'd actually use it, and more obvious when it's mic'd in close. Knowing the switch choice and springs can play a role as well, I tested both the blueberries and the kale silent linears. Now, as far as fit and finish goes, neither of these boards were 100% perfect, but these are early. The entry has a couple rough edges in the plastic, one in particular that looks like it may have been chipped. I would also recommend not opening either board unless you have to, because my polycar board now has a little flex with an audible squeak in the front side. I have to strongly stress that there is absolutely no reason to open this board, no functional reason at all, unless you're modding it, in which case you're on your own. The aluminum version has a slight dip in the dead center of the plate that prevents switches from seating fully in the plate, but still allows them to sit perfectly in the PCB. I didn't find either of those issues to be anything serious, but it's worth pointing out. So value conversation. Taking the aluminum version at 180 head to head against like the all bare bones, which is 140 for the low and 190 for the high profile, unless you just like the look of the alt high profile, which I personally do, the NK65 can be viewed as either clean and minimal or safe and boring, depending on your take. Unless you absolutely detest having three single unit keys next to your spacebar, or you get a lot of use out of alt secondary USB-C port, the two biggest issues to consider here are one, case ping, which is more pronounced on the NK65, and two, the overall aesthetic goals you have, because that's really gonna play into whether or not you want north or south facing switches. If you see yourself going backlit PBT keycaps, which cost less than a third the cost of like a GMK set, go all. If backlit keycaps are not important and you wanna explore the high-end world of GMK, NK65. Going against the low profile bare bones, the difference here is 40 bucks. And again, aesthetics and your lighting goals are gonna play a factor here. Looking at extras, you're probably gonna replace this included cable. Now, how quickly you do is a factor of budget or availability and lead time, but you're probably going to. And the carrying case is great for sure. Not sure how often I would personally use it, but it is a nice touch. Board versus board on the NK65, you're getting south facing switches, support for PCB mount switches without permanently altering your switches, better stabs, a more aesthetic, better laid out PCB, and you're sacrificing height adjust, secondary USB, case accent lighting, and performance for backlit keycaps. Noise dampening is a draw because there isn't any included on the alt, and I don't find it to be as effective as I'd like it to be on the NK65. Having hot swap without having to permanently mod your switches is huge. And having south facing switches so you never have to worry about any compatibility issues between your switch choice and your high end keycaps 
those two right there will probably seal it for the enthusiast crowd. It does have to be said that 180 against 180, you get a bare bones on the novel key side versus, depending on your switch choice, a completed board on the drop side. But with the switch variety in the market, why anybody would purposely purchase Cherry MX switches at this point, especially at a $20 price premium, is beyond me. Also, the included stabs on the alt are trash, which I will keep hammering home until they do something about it. Bear in mind, all those comparisons are talking about the $180 aluminum version of the NK65. If you're looking at the polycarbonate, the entry level at $95, it's pretty much game over. Nothing else even comes close. As best I can tell, the Tofu RGB 60% is the closest, and while it does still have aluminum case options, it's gonna get you for $159 when it's in stock. And if you've ever actually tried to purchase a board at KBD Fans, you know pretty much everything is sold out all the time. The wait times are huge, the backlogs are huge. It's difficult to do. These are gonna be in stock stateside here in the US at $95. About the only potential drawback I can see here is that if you're a big fan of Shine Through PBT keycaps, this isn't gonna be for you. And not everybody's gonna be a fan of that purple, but the instant they drop this thing in like a smoke translucent gray or like a frosted clear, Forget about it. So that's my final take on it. The aluminum at 180, it's nice. I'm just not blown away. The entry level at 95, super strong recommendation and a clear runway to explore higher end switch and keycap combos. Big, big fan of this board. No firm date or time on release yet. I know the first shipment is already on its way here, so expect stock on these sometime towards the end of June. I will let you guys know virtually everywhere I possibly can as soon as I have more info. As always, links to everything we discussed down in the description. Any questions, hit me in the comments or drop by the Discord. And that's it for this time. I'm Brian P. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button, hit that sub button. And until next time, stay up.